Today on Wood Turning, we're going to have a ball. Well, actually, a sphere. A perfect sphere. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers, too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. I'm drawing the center marks on my blank right now. I'm using a piece of Clara walnut, which is really cool walnut. It has a lot of figure and grain in it. But by going edge to edge, I'm finding the exact center on this blank. And this is three inches square and five inches long. So <laughs> I don't have an edge on this one, so that's going to be kind of fun to try to work out. So I'll estimate it. You want to be really accurate on where the center is on this because we're going to be mounting this and we want to use as much wood as possible and not waste anything. So I'll do that there. God, that looks crooked, but we'll see here in a second how it is. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to make a sphere. And I've actually practiced that word for the last eight years, and I think I'm getting better at it finally. But if you think about why do you want to make a ball? Well, it's the most perfect shape in the universe. I think Michelangelo did this. I'm not sure, but when applying for the Sistine Chapel, they asked him what his skills were, and he stood there and drew a perfect circle with one line. It is the most difficult shape to achieve, and when you do achieve it, it is wonderful because people want to hold this, play with it, marvel at it, and it is just the ultimate in turning. The only problem is, is that to make one takes a great deal of skill and kind of, you know, great um, technique. I don't exactly possess that, so I need a little help. And we're going to be using a tool a little bit later made by Carter Products, and it's called the Perfect Sphere Tool. And this system helps you make a perfect arc so you can make a sphere without a lot of sweating it out. So anyway, we've prepared our blank. We're going to mount it on the lathe. And before we use the Carter system, we've got to turn this a bit and get it ready for it. And we'll take our Perfect Sphere jig and put it over here and just do some good old-fashioned wood turning for a second. This is the edge I had to kind of guess on, so put this point on here. Whoops, back this off just a tick. And we're going to try to center her up. The reason centering this up is so important is I don't want to waste this wood. It's expensive wood, and I want to have the biggest balls I can have. I want to have the largest sphere I can have for this project. <laughs> <sighs> think then speak okay anyway so it's mounted on there and we're going to rotate this see if anything's touching the nice thing is you can see i have a pretty even exposure between here and there and this is parallel with the tool bed i mean with the lay ways of the lathe and so that looks really good so i'm going to raise this up just a tick and we're going to get a roughing gouge and we're going to rough this out grab my eyes grab my roughing gouge and turn this on at a slow speed and then bring the speed up a little bit more there we go since this is clara walnut it's a little bit dark so i'm going to turn a light on real quick there's the on button turn it right there and yeah, i can see that a little bit better okay so i'm going to start from the edge normally i tell newbies to start in the middle like that so i'm going to start on the edge and just move my body across and actually, I'm going to pick the speed up a little bit more. The slower it goes, sometimes the worse the cut is because the tool wants to fall into the flat spots on the blank. So there we go. Now you can see that the tool is actually riding on the wood a little bit better. But let's just go ahead and knock this out. Just keep moving my body and shifting into the cut. Come back here. Now we're almost to solid wood. A little trick I do is just take the tool. Ah, there's no bumping right there, so let's stop it and see where we are. Okay, that looks pretty good. Got one little exposed spot here, but what I'm more concerned about is that the center is rounded out. So we're good there. And what I want to do, put that big boy up, and I'm going to take just a little set of calipers. 
And all I'm going to do with them is I'm going to take the diameter of the uh, blank and then I'm going to transfer it. So let me get one thing hoist. It should have a pen or a pencil. Here we go. There's one. I'm going to make my center. I'm just going to eye it in and make a mark right there. Okay, so that's where I'm going to take my measurement. Come in here with these. And okay, there's my diameter. Now, just going to eye it in here. And this is going to be probably the out one end of the sphere. And this will be the other end of the sphere. So what I'm wanting to do right now is I want to move this wood out of the way so we can use the jig in a second. So let me turn this on. I'm going to make my marks. And I can see this one. It's right there. So you can take a big old parting tool, whatever you want. I'm just actually going to grab a spindle gouge. We'll go with this little bitty one. And I'm going to come in here. Let me stop this real quick. When you're turning, you don't want to leave a big gap between the wood and the tool rest because it induces more vibration. And if you get a catch, the tool will fall down in between there. And it's not that good of a deal when you do that. So turn her back on. So I'm going to pare down this edge. And I'm just going to come in with this tool, use my thumb as a brake, open up the face a little bit, and just make a 45 degree cut for a second here. And you can see it moves the wood really fast. I don't have to have a big tool to do this. This is a little 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And so now what I want to do, now I'm going to use a real brake with my thumb, bring it in here. We're going to make a cut like this. And I'll swing and open up the tool like so. Move the light over there, get rid of that shadow for you. So again, come in here like so. It starts to cut. I rotate and come in here. Now, if you were to use a parting tool, it's great. It doesn't, isn't a problem because you're just coming in straight like this and making a cut like so. I just like sometimes using the spindle gouge because it's more fun to make the cut. <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to bring this tenon down to about uh, three quarters of an inch, a half inch. This is a walnut, like I said, so you don't want to make it too small because it can tend to chip or break. So anyway, I have that tenon there. I'm going to make an identical one here, and then we're going to start shaping this blank a little bit. Now, when you look at a sphere, it has, <laughs> I want to say, a very distinct shape. Uh, yeah, it's only one shape. That's all you can make with a sphere. I've made lots of eggs trying to make spheres. Those are all distinct shapes. This is, or different shapes. This is just the same shape. But you look at that curve there. When we use this jig in a minute, we want to move as much of this wood out of the way before we use it. So I've got to come in here and start making some cuts. So you kind of look at the, well, that covers the whole picture up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you kind of see the ball here, and you just, in your minds, I have to figure out how much curve I got to make and how much uh, confidence you have. Because the worst thing you can do right now is to come into here and take off too much. So I have been making a couple of spheres with this system, and I have always erred on the side of leaving too much wood on here. Uh, if you go online and look at Carter Products uh, instructional video on how to use their system, that guy is good. He turns the sphere by hand that almost looks like a sphere, so he's not moving a lot of wood, and it's a very fast process for him. I, on the other hand, am a slow learner at times, so I'm not quite as uh, skilled as he is. One other thing I'm not skilled at is being ambidextrous and <laughs> or <coughs> eating. <coughs> uh, that was walnut. Excuse me, that went a little deep. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm using still a right-handed cut, but when I cut to my left, I don't have as smooth a body movement. And I must go back to my years of not doing dance. But anyway, so you'll notice on my sphere, this looks good here and over here it looks kind of wonky. That's just life. So that's why I want to use a jig to help me make this shape. And if you think about it, if you want to make these, you're making them for friends, families, family. <laughs> a lot of you also are making them to sell. So I could spend probably an hour and a half here trying to get this perfect tournament by hand. But using a jig to help me, I, I, it's easy. It makes it faster. And nobody's ever going to ask you what devices did you use to turn it. They're going to go, this is really cool. So anyway, so we have this rounded out, kind of. So the next step we want to do is we're going to put the jig system on here and start working on making the ball. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. 
Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.